Hey guys, welcome to Chris Mack. For today's video, I have the 2023 Honda CRV EXL. I'm going to show you around this vehicle and take on a test drive and give you guys my final verdict. As always, please sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications. Let's get into this video, shall we? Look on the outside of the 2023 Honda CRV. This is your key fob. You got lock, unlock, remote start, tailgate release, as well as a panic button. Now for 23, the CRV does come with two distinct trims for the gas version. You have a LX base as well as this top of the line EXL for the gas engines. Now sliding between both of these two trims is a sport hybrid trim. And then of course you do also have a sport hybrid touring trim which slots right above this. So if you basically want the most features, you have to go for the hybrid trim. But um, this is dressed in a Canyon River blue exterior color. You can see of course you do have full LED lighting with the full Honda Sense up front. LED turn signals are up top. Do wish it did have fog lights, but um, I will wait and see when the Sport Touring Hybrid does come in. Looking at the wheels, you have 18 inch rims, wrapped on 235 with tires. Now you can get the rims finished in a black finish for no charge, or if you want something just a little bit more different, a bronze finish for $1,500. You of course have keyless entry for the front door handles. Now one thing to point out with the keyless entry is that just like with the Toyota sensors or the Toyota systems, you can't see that you do have to put the button to lock it, but when you are going to unlock the vehicle, you just put your hand behind the door and it'll unlock. It's like touch sensitive. But um, up top you do have a moonroof. This is your window sticker right here. As equipped, this is $36,000. Has all the different various features right there. 29 miles to the gallon, but with today's markups, it's going for about $45,000. Gas tank on this side right there. Coming around to the rear, you can see the design really reminds me a little bit of like a Volvo-ish design in the back, but I do like these three L shapes right there to make it stand out just a little bit more. You have halogen turn signals right there with LED brake lights, as well as LED reverse lights right there in the middle. CRV badging, and to tell when it is all-wheel drive, all drive badging is right there. Opening the tailgate, which is of course powered with this EXL trim. You will find 39 cubic feet of space. You have LED illumination on both sides with a 12 volt charger and some tie downs for your cargo. Carpet floor mats right there. As well as a temporary spare tire. Oh, there we go. <laughs> They got a little wedge, but um, seats are 60 40 split, so 60 on this side and 40 on that side, which is labeled right there. You can, of course, set the height with your power tailgate, but let me show you guys under the hood. Hood releases right down there. Now, popping the hood of the 23 CRV. You can't see right there, you'll need a strut brace for that as this is gas struts right there. So opening the hood, you will find a 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder, makes 190 horsepower, 179 pound foot torque. You will get 27 in the city, 32 on the highway and 29 combined. It is connected to a CVT transmission. Vehicle's weight is about 3,600 pounds. This one of course is all wheel drive. I'm gonna show you guys the interior of the 23 CRV. This is how the seat set at my frame at five foot six. You have a little bit of soft touch materials right there. Everything else is just a little bit harder. But I um, do like the new pattern that they do have with the new CRV. So hopping in, ground clearance is about 8.2 inches, so stepping in isn't too bad. I literally have about six, seven inches of leg room with about three inches of headroom, so it's pretty good. You do have two air vents right there. Do wish it did have some USB ports or something for the back so that everybody could be happily charging their devices when they're in the vehicle. Little storage right there. Do like they do have LED illumination. And the leather is so soft around this rear cup holder. Very nice touch. Here's a quick look to the front cabin. So let's go ahead and hit the driver's seat and see what it's all about. Opening the driver's seat, you can see, of course, you have a 10-way power seat. Now, keep in mind, the passenger seat actually gets a four-way power function as well. So, you got two-way lumbar support, back support, bottom support, 
mirror controls with automatic windows for all four and you have two person memory right there this is soft touch right there this is even soft touch right there materials are pretty good for the front cabin is more improved than the back seats tilt telescoping steering wheel gas brake pedal you got your traction as well as your tailgate release right there just like in the back seats the 8.2 inch ground clearance is pretty good and stepping height isn't too bad light controls on this side with your wiper controls on that side you can also control the rear wiper in the back as well looking at the steering wheel of course this is a three spoke design i do wish it was heated unfortunately it's not heated for about thirty six thousand dollars i wish the honda actually included that but um, looking right there at the central display, it is a seven inch driver cluster. So this half is digital with a analog speedo right there. So you got your home button and that's how you can control your various different displays. Any central display right there. So you got your trip information. You of course, put up your audio, radio, as well as heading, driver tension warning, all wheel drive distribution, seatbelt warning, maintenance. And of course you put up all your driver assistance technology and this does come very well equipped with all different driver assistance which we'll try on the road you can adjust the brightness gauge displays warnings or you can just have like your range and fuel which i've been leaving up for most of the drive but um you also have your digital speedo right there miles as well as your fuel tank right there and your different drive modes and your analog, your analog speedo right there on that side this is how you control your adaptive cruise control settings for your honda sense which we will try on the road looking at the nine inch infotainment display just like any Civic, HRV, and all other newer Honda products. You can't see this very easily used. Do love the home button. You have a back, a hard volume button right there. Scroll dial, which of course very feels high quality. Track forward back. And then the touch screen display, you have your different built-in apps. Phone, AM, FM, Series, XM radio. You got your Bluetooth audio right there. You got a connected device. And of course, this does have wireless connectivity, so we will try that out. Connect new device. So I'll go ahead and pull out my phone. You go into your settings, Bluetooth, Honda CRV, pair. You see right there, it's connecting. And then you say use CarPlay right there on your phone. And you can't see right there, it will connect in a second. And there it is right there. So you hit that. And Apple CarPlay is connected. So let's go ahead and try out your audio test. Now it does have an eight speaker sound system. Keep in mind when you do go for the Sport Touring Hybrid, it will have a 12 speaker Bose sound system. Let's try it out. <laughs> Do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit. If it moves, gotta grab it. Fuse like a magnet. Moves won't have it till I'm doomed in a casket. I ain't playing, got a weird mind. If you work it, As you can see, the sound system is okay. It kind of has like a little tinny sound to it. But um, I'm more excited to try out the 12 speaker Bose sound system in the sport touring trim. So when that comes in, I will try to add a later date. But so far, the sound system is pretty good. It does a good job with the eight speakers at sound uh, quality you can tell is a little bit lower than what the bose does with their systems but i'm going back you have your sirius xm radio chip computer right there miles per gallon of course you use your usb integration right there general settings for your system displays you got vehicle settings right there and just like with my other newer honda videos they did incorporate like elements of the car not just regular old design pieces right there so you got your maintenance tailgate you can customize like the height door setup right there you got fuel efficiency right there as well as your rear seat reminder function and you can also adjust like your speed and all that right there's your driver system so you can customize the full honda sensing technology from your front collision assist of course got beep right there your mitigation road departure blind spot assist you can turn all that on and off You got your driver attention monitor right there, speed limit, as well as traffic recognition. So it will scan like for a speed limit and tell you the speed limit. And if you actually put it in the settings, it'll actually like slow down with the speed limit if you go a little bit too fast. Driver memory right there. 
keyless entry, and so on. Over here, you do have your different AM, FM radios as well. So you actually have like three presets for the radio. So you got Sirius XM, FM, as well as the AM right there. System updates, clock information, as well as your Honda Link app. When you do purchase the vehicle, you can use like the app to control remote start functions and other vehicle functions. Compass, shortcuts, that's your vehicle display right there for the infotainment, and so on. You, of course, do have your phone button right there, your radio functions, CarPlay, and some shortcut buttons down here just to make things a little bit more streamlined. Now, just like any Civic, I do like kind of the floating design where they have with the air vents that kind of sweep across the whole front of the dash. Has a button right there with your push button start right there, illuminated in red. You do have a dual zone climate control with three stage heated front seats. You can see it does come up in the infotainment display when you do turn it on right there in your line of sight. You, of course, have a dual zone climate control. Do wish you did have a heated steering wheel, especially at this price point. But when I'm looking down here, you do have a USB C port, the USB A port, as well as a 12 volt charger. And you do have a wireless phone pad. which obviously works just fine and just flash yellow. Yeah, there you go. You can see right there why this phone charger works perfect. This is your gear shifter, just like in the previous generation, I do like kind of the floating center console design that they have for the CRV. You have a gear shifter right there. Put into reverse. Do wish you did have a 360 camera, but um, this backup camera does have trajectory lines. It's pretty good. So you can see right there, you do have your different modes right there for your display. Personally, I think this is probably the best view. It has the best graphics and the best trajectory lines. But this one right here gives you that better angle where you can like really look around the corners. But I like the clarity of this one better. We, of course, have rear parking sensors as well as like rear cross traffic alert. You have neutral drive, sport, as well as a low mode for like inclement weather or snow. You have your drive modes right there. So you can toggle up for normal, econ, as well as a snow mode. Auto start stop defeat with a hill descent function. Electronic parking brake with brake hold functions right there. And you do have two cup holders, which are a pretty good size. And a little storage right here if you want to have like the coins or you can put the key right there. Looking right there in the center console, you do have a little pad right there if you want to put some more stuff, like a wallet or something. You can of course adjust that where you can have it back here or right there. Has pretty good room in there. But looking up top, auto damping river mirror with LED illumination. You of course do have a mill roof, which lets in pretty good light. You can of course as well tilt it open. So I'm sure you guys have to tilt it open. So you gotta push like that second half to really get the uh, mill roof to tilt open. LED illumination, you can put your sunglass holder up there. You got your visor. How you guys doing? Hope you guys like the video. But let's go ahead and take the 23 CRV for a quick drive and see how she does. All right, we're behind the wheel of the 23 CRV. We're going to throw in the drive. I'm going to go ahead and switch it into its econ mode for maximum fuel economy. Now, first setting off in the CRV, let's speak about visibility. It is good out the front, rear, and side. It's got the two box design SUV. Mirrors are a good size as well. And on that side, you have a nice, good look over the hood. Do like how angular the hood is now with this new generation. It's definitely a little bit more like on a boxer kind of aggressive off road focused look design, which I do like. As you can see in eco driving around town, that the CVT is very smooth and you can't really like tell that much. It's a CVT transmission. You see right there, this does also have auto start stop, which as we stopped at the light, the vehicle is at idle. Then we let your foot off the brake. Starts up very smooth, no shimmies or shakes throughout the vehicle. Now I'll put about just under 50 miles on this car before I actually like recorded the video. So I had a lot of seat time in this vehicle to go over the functions 
interact with it on a daily basis and see how it is. See, it does have good mid-range torque right there. Now, a couple things, obviously, around the town driving and, like, using, like, half throttle. It does have a lot of pep as far as, like, that mid-range torque goes. It's about 179 pound-foot of it, and you can feel it right on tap. Now, gas mileage is, of course, rated at about 29 miles to the gallon combined. And so far in my driving, I have to say that that was about bang on right as far as miles per gallon goes. It is right on top of where Honda's claims are for this CRV. You, of course, have the full suite of Honda sensing technology, so automatic emergency braking stuff. You got the lane departure warning, blind spot assist, and so on. going to plop it into its normal setting we of course do have a snow mode as well and if you are looking for like a sport mode the most thing i would recommend is probably just put it in normal and then put the transmission like a sport setting and that's probably the most sportiness you're going to get and maybe turn on traction but yeah around the town driving i have to say is very smooth you do have strut suspension up front with multi-links in the rear. And it really just goes over like bumps and imperfections very smoothly. And a city driver, you can really tell it's just quiet. Honda did a lot of refinement though when it came to going this generation from the previous generation. It's a lot more smoother, quieter in the cabin than the previous generation. I did have a chance to recently drive and you can really tell it's like a night and day difference. But we are going to hit the back road and see how it does. So I will see you guys in a second. Auto start is of course still activated. So lay your foot off. Fires right back up. Very smooth of course. You just go ahead and put the transmission in sport and that's basically your sport mode. You can't see right there, the CVT also does simulated shifts. But I do want to try acceleration right up here. We'll just go ahead and turn off traction. It is all with drive, so we'll try like a little brake torque, nothing too crazy. Because the Honda CVT sometimes bog a little bit, so you just want to give it just a little bit. Spool and go. Um, now, acceleration felt about just under eight seconds. Once it really picks up speed and gets in that boost, you can tell it just really takes off. And from a roll, it really just pulls. You can see now we're going over some of the rough stuff. The suspension really do its magic. McPherson struts, the multi-links in the rear. Make for a phenomenal ride. So much more improved and refined. And then coupled with the 18 inch rims, 235 width tires, bueno. Do wanna try one more acceleration. So this time we're just gonna leave it in sport auto, no brake torque, and we're just gonna floor it from a standstill. It's 
very quick. I mean, that felt pretty good. Definitely under eight second range. On a good day, I'd say about 7.8. Maybe seven and a half if you're really lucky, but um, definitely seven and a half to eight second range as far as acceleration will go. Yep, fall time is here, you see these. And in sport mode, you can't see those holes your revs just over 2,000 RPM. So that once you put your foot down, it goes right into boost So You see right there? The turbo kicks in, boom. And just takes off. But I'm sure 99.9% .9 of y'all will just leave it in its drive setting. Probably normal eco, which I would to say is probably the best mode for daily driving a vehicle. This road definitely has a lot of bumps. My head's just swaying. <laughs> but we are going to go ahead and hit the highway and see how the CRV does at highway pace, as well as try out the adaptive cruise control settings. So I'll see you guys in a second. All right, we're entering the highway. You can't see right there, you do have a Volvo XC60. And the rear end just looks so much like the CRV. Which, from your perspective, may be a good thing if you are buying a CRV. But um, now that we're hitting the highway, let's really try it out now. Now that little beeping that you guys keep hearing is just the lane keeping assist going off. Mode. Now the first thing you notice at highway speeds is obviously that the car is very quiet going about just under 65 or 60. I'm going to throw in the adaptive cruise control settings right there. But um, yeah, the car is very smooth and quiet at highway speeds. Of course, the adaptive cruise control works very good. You just turn it on with this, and then you push down to set the speed. It can go up in like one mile an hour increments, or you hold down, you'll go up in five mile an hour increments. Got the lane keeping assist, which works very good. I mean, the car is just smooth at highway speeds. It's very refined. So go ahead and hit that, turn it off. But I do want to plop it into a sport setting try out some passing power. Yeah, this 
just give it a minute for the CVT to get the ratio right and the turbo to kick and boost and more than enough power on the daily basis. But this really gets me excited though to drive the Sport Touring Hybrid whenever that one comes to dealership. But um, I definitely want to try out the hybrid version, which I'm hearing is just a little bit more faster, peppier electric motor. So I'm really excited to try that one out. That has a 6.8 seconds, 0 to 60. So yeah. But as we go ahead and get into our exit, let me get into the conclusion of what I think about the 23 CRV. Now this EXL trim as equipped, I feel like for $36,000, it's a little expensive for all of the things that you are getting. I feel like this should be about quick, about 32,000 ish, but this is 36. It is missing things like I think heated steering wheel and it's a little bit more like the interior sound system. As an eight speaker sound system, it sounds like kind of hollowish and tinny, but um, I'm hoping that the Bose sound system, like I stated before, will refine that. Do like that it does have a power tailgate. Of course, have memory seats, which are very easily used. Backup camera is pretty good, has pretty good uh, clearance. You got trajectory lines. You of course have the full sense of Honda safety sense technology, which is very interactive, easily used. Got the adaptive cruise control settings with the lane keeping assist, which works most of the time. And then you see right there, you have auto start, stop, put your foot on the brake. Things to really help you achieve and eke out that full miles per gallon of 29 combined. Thanks to the CVT, the auto start stop, and the improved engine. And of course, Honda also did good materials right there. So you got all the soft touch materials for the front seats, automatic windows for all four, hill descent function, sport mode. And of course, I always love the wireless connectivity of the Hondas, the wireless CarPlay, and of course, Android Auto. Last year's Honda would just incorporate a little bit more of that magic that they are capable of. But that's basically going to wrap up my video. So far, the EXL CRV is, I'll say, about just a little bit above average, but um, it really doesn't like knock your socks off per se. But I'm really excited to drive the Sport Touring and see if that really fixes some of the complaints that I do have with the 23 CRV. As always, please sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notifications. This is Chris signing out. And I'll see you guys later. One other thing, 2.02 before I actually close. The seats are comfortable. I actually like the seats. I like the nice pattern right there. Perforated leather. Phenomenal. But um, I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Chris signing out. Peace.